Hey everybody, Jason here. I wanted to make this video mainly for beginners who are setting up their first tank. Uh, I know I see people a lot having trouble the first time. Um, they get bacteria blooms or fish dying or their parameters are all out of whack. A lot of times it has to do with filtrations or the filter you're using. So I wanted to make a, f a video going over that and hopefully we can solve some of those issues. Uh, I know a lot of beginners will go out and buy those kits for the first time from PetSmart or Petco. You know, you get the tank and the light and the filter and all that stuff. And those are pretty decent, but the filters that come with those are very limited. I'll show you how to make them into a good filter. And we'll go over a lot of the parts and other things that you guys can do to make sure that your tank runs good. All right, guys, I'm going to go over some basics first. Uh, first off, terminology. This is actually your filter. This is your filter cartridge or mechanical filter. Same with this, sponge mechanical filter. And this is your biological media. This is your chemical media, your carbon. Um, I'll go into that a little bit. Not too many people use carbon. It's kind of optional. You don't necessarily need it. So I'm not going to focus too much on the carbon, but I will talk about it. The two main things you need to have in your filter is mechanical and biological. You have to have those two. And you do not want to combine them. And I'll show you what that means. When you buy a kit from the store, it's going to come with a filter like this. Well, at least most of them do. I do not have a cartridge for this one, so I'm actually going to use this tiny one. And this is the filter that actually fits. So this actually goes to like a two and a half, a two and a half gallon tank. And the way this works is you would plug in your airline here. It will blow bubbles up here and draw the current up, out, back into your tank. So just for the sake of discussion, this is the basic style of filters that come with your aquarium kits, like these. Something that just sucks the water up and it's going to go through a cartridge. And that's all they give you. They give you a cartridge. That's it. Here's the problem with only having a cartridge. This cartridge is supposed to act as your mechanical and biological media, and the problem with that is, at some point, this is gonna clog up. And when that happens, you gotta take it out and you gotta clean it. When you do that, you just cleaned off all your beneficial bacteria and you're gonna throw your tank off balance. The water parameters could change and you just could've uh, screwed your tank up. It doesn't always happen that bad, it's a very good possibility. Even with something like this, this simple, the one way you can make this an awesome filter is take your biological media. And what I've got here is lava rock. Just basic lava rock, you can get it at your hardware store. It's a great media for beginners. Uh, I got this stuff, it's about $4 for like a 20 pound bag or maybe a 10 pound bag, but you get a lot. And all you have to do is take some of that rock. You're gonna have to sift through and get the small stuff. And you would fill it up and the lava rock just became your biological media, just like that. Just doing that alone will eliminate so many issues in your tank. And so this is what you do. This lava rock, you don't ever throw out, you don't ever clean it. You can rinse it off just a little bit if it gets a little bit too clogged up. But now, you can take out this filter when it's time to clean, when this gets clogged up, you can either clean this and put it back in, or you can toss it. It doesn't matter, because all your biological media is right here, and then when you go buy a new cartridge, and you put the new one in, you put your bio back in there, and your tank will not be thrown off balance. The same goes for a filter like this. I don't, like I said, I don't have the cartridge for it. This one's a little bit different. Um, it has a plastic holder tray here where you slip the cartridge in there so it's kind of you won't be able to shove your bio media in here so what I would do is turn this around fill that up and you put your filter floss your mechanical media back there for something like this you're gonna have to go buy some pillow bedding and that works fine uh, so you would just turn this around and put your mechanical back there fill that up with your bio and leave that there and that alone will eliminate so many issues in your tank. You have to have a biological media. And if it makes sense, 
you want to keep your mechanical and your bio separate. The main theory of this is when the water goes into your filter, the first thing it's going to go through is your mechanical filtration. The part, the sponge, the cartridge that's going to trap all the particles. The, the last thing it's going to go through is your biological media. It's the part that collects all your beneficial bacteria that helps keep your tank stable. Now in between this, you can add your filter. This will be in a, a, a filter that you customize. You can't necessarily do that in a ready-made like this. This type, if you can see through here, the filter comes with carbon inside of it. So if you were to take a filter like this and set it up like we did with the lava rock, you already have carbon in there. If you're going to customize your own filter, whether or not you add the carbon, that's up to you. But like I said, you have to have a biological media in your filter that is not removed from the filter. You can remove it to clean it. I mean, you can't remove it to throw it out. And you cannot continue to use these over and over and over and over again. Which is why you have to have a filter where this always stays in and these can be replaced. Okay guys, here's an example of what I was talking about. Here's a picture of that filter up and running. Where you actually have the filter floss, the mechanical filter in the back. The water comes up, all the particles get caught there, and then the water goes over the biomedia back into the tank. Another example, here's my 20 gallon tall that I got up and running. I have a completely customized sump that I have made. This, I know this might be a little technical for you beginners, but it's actually very simple. This is a power head right here. You can get these at PetSmart for 25 bucks. Uh, this particular one pumps 118 gallons per hour, and it has two spouts. This, in, this is the intake. It sucks the water in right here and then out right there. Now I made a hose, so it pumps the water up here. Down the first chamber in the back, you can see how brown my filter floss is. That's how well it's working. It's capturing all the debris. And then it goes through the middle chamber to the right over the heater, and then goes into the last chamber through all that biomedia, and then back into the tank. Now this is a completely customized sump filter right here, and it works freaking awesome works very very well and if you're wondering what all the bubbles are in there there's actually my bubbler is inside of there it oxygenates the water and the media and it just further benefits the tank so also the water coming back into the tank right here gives plenty of bubbles that help oxygenate it also so guys the, ma the main benefit i love to this sump is the white mechanical filtration in the back Whenever I do a water change or it gets really dirty, as you can see that it is, I take it out and chuck it, and I put a new one in. And the bio media, <clears throat> the red rock on the bottom, which is actually the bio home ultimate media, that always stays in there. I don't move it. That's what keeps my tank stable. The white mechanical filtration, I can clean it, put it back in, I toss it. I buy a big old huge roll of pillow bedding for $4, and it lasts me months and months. I don't even bother cleaning it, and my tank never goes off balance. I just throw out that white piece, stick another one in. That's it. That's the only thing I do. Okay, real quick, let's talk about filter placement. And in my opinion, this is actually uh, is as important as what you have in your filter. This is a standard 10 gallon and a 20 gallon long. These are a fairly common size, even when they get bigger. The 20 gallon tall and 30 gallon talls are just about, about the same shape, the bigger they go. And you've got your 40 gallon breeder and your 75 gallon that are somewhat this shape. So these are two great sizes to use a, as an example. Okay, so for a 10 gallon, you can pretty much place this anywhere. Not really a big deal. Um, doesn't really matter. I tend to like to put it a little bit kind of between one side and the middle like that. On a 20 gallon, don't put it right there. With this style of filter, it takes in water here. It lets it back in there. That's in one general area. If you put your filter right here, 
you're basically only going to be circulating and filtering half your tank. The water over here will eventually get over there. It could take a couple of days. Um, I would recommend either putting this in the middle, maybe somewhat there, or better yet, having two of them. Uh, I don't like these filters. These are called HOB hang on the back filters. I don't like them because they intake the water and release it in the same general area. On my sump I just showed you, it takes water out from one side and puts it back in the other. That creates a constant flow of the tank and you're filtering all the water. But if you don't want to customize your own filter, if you just want to go buy one ready-made, or like I said in the beginning, if you're buying one of the kits from PetSmart and you get one of these, um, tend to, of course, these 20 gallon longs don't come with a kit as far as I know. It'll mainly be something like this. So if you can, try to place it more in the middle. Uh, if you have a tank like this, don't put it there. Bad idea. This is a filter made by Marineland. It's a Power 350 Penguin Bio Wheel filter. I have personally owned one of these. Highly, highly recommend them. In a filter, this is your standard hang on the back filter, except you've got two ports. You do not have to add biomedia to this filter. Here's a pic I tried to find of an open view of this filter. You have your two filter cartridges right here. And instead of piling lava rock into there, this these wheels collect the beneficial bacteria and they turn as the water comes through. Over time, they may get stuck and not turn very well, doesn't matter. The fact is, these wheels, you don't ever clean the wheels. You can clean these all you want, chuck them, replace them, do whatever you want. The wheels you never replace, just like the lava rock, the biological media. This wheel acts as the biological media, and it works. I've owned two of these on a 75 gallon. They worked very well. I still don't like the hang on the back filters, but I would highly recommend something like this. If you go and purchase something like this, you don't have to add any biomedia. This is your biomedia right here. One last quick thing before we end this video. Two major key components to setting up your new aquarium is bacteria supplement and water conditioner. Uh, more than likely if you buy a kit, they'll come with these. I don't know if they actually come with the bacteria supplement. I think it's like an enzyme stress reliever. I don't I don't remember. But to make sure that your filter and your aquarium properly starts its its cycle, add bacteria supplement and water conditioner according to the directions and make sure you add both of those with every water change. Um, there, you can also start cycling your filter with ammonia and some other things. I'm not going to go into every single little detail. Like I said, I'm going to keep this really short, simple, and basic. Um, for you beginners, you're starting up a tank. These two will be your best friends. Always add this. The bacteria supplement will help establish your biomedia that we talked about, the lava rock. This will help jumpstart it. And this water conditioner is going to take out um, chlorine and chemicals and all kinds of things in your tap water. I would do some research on your tap water and see if you can find out exactly what's in it. I'm in Oregon. The water here is pretty clean to begin with, so I don't have too many issues. Okay, guys, that's the video. Um, I hope I explained everything properly. I know I didn't get into what to do with carbon. It's not really that big of a deal. It's not mandatory, um, but I hope I explained everything properly. Um, if you guys just stick to some of those guidelines, try to keep your mechanical and your biofiltration separate your two parts of your filter. If you can try to keep those separate, so where you can clean one and then the other one stays in your filter, you will eliminate a lot of issues. Um, I didn't go into the whole cycling process of the tank, the nitrogen cycle. Um, that can be very complicated and confusing. Um, I just wanted to keep this short and simple on how to set up a filter, maybe where to place it on your aquarium. Okay, so whether you're gonna build one or buy one, I hope this helps you out. Uh, understand these are my view, viewpoints based on my experience. A lot of other people will have different opinions. That's fine. Um, but uh, after having a sump on my, just this 20 gallon, having, making my own acrylic sump, I'll never go back to buying a store-bought one. 
once you can customize one and see what you can do with it, it's awesome. I would highly recommend watch a bunch of videos on YouTube on making custom filters. You'll see what I mean. Um, uh, really doesn't matter. A hang on the back filter, a canister, a sump. There's videos everywhere on how to customize one, how to make one from scratch, all of that. And um, it's really fun. Uh, it's a great learning experience. And to me, the, the homemade filter is the best one. So thanks for watching, guys.